Hey, honey. Yes, Barry? Let's get out of here. Where are we going? Where do we always go? Hasta encontrar la playa Por eso grito al mundo Yo soy de Puerto Vallarta Samba de Puerto Vallarta Noche de arriba en el mar Samba Hello, travelers, and welcome to this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show, all about taking buses in Puerto Vallarta. I'm your host, Barry Kessler. I'm just so happy to be introducing you to my favorite vacation destination, and maybe it's yours. If it's not, maybe one day it will be yours, and that's Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. That music that you're listening to is performed by Alberto Perez. And Alberto is the owner of the La Palapa Group of Restaurants. La Palapa Restaurant is right on the south side of town, right down on the beach in Puerto Vallarta. And La Palapa and the El Dorado Restaurants right there are just fantastic restaurants run by Mr. Perez. And uh, if you play your cards right, you can hear Alberto Perez play his beautiful music and enjoy songs like that one you were just listening to, Samba de Puerto Vallarta, when you come and enjoy a dinner at La Palapa. Just saying, an added bonus to a great romantic meal on the beach. And yeah, you can have that if you come to Puerto Vallarta. So now, before we get to buses in Puerto Vallarta, I want to thank a listener. Brett from Seattle, Washington reminds me that there's a tip that I should not have forgotten, and that has to do with filling out those immigration forms that we talked about in show number two and in show number three. You know the one that I'm talking about, the one that the flight attendant gives you before you touch down in Puerto Vallarta. You know, the one that you kind of have to fight to fill out, and and sometimes you can't get a pen or a pencil, so you got to bring one along, right? That one? Well, those are called FFMs, which stands for Forma Migratoria Multipal. Multipal. Anyway, he says that in his podcast note, he says this. I'll just read for you here. Barry, listening to your second podcast and noticed you didn't mention that you can complete the FMM online. It's so much easier and you don't have to worry about a pen and writing small enough to get everything in the tiny boxes. When printed, fold it several times so that they can separate the top part from the bottom, like the pre-printed ones. So he's basically saying, fold it a couple times so you kind of got it a little bit perforated. And he says, I occasionally have to tell them it's nuevo en lina, which means it's new online. So it's a big time saver, he says, and he gives me the link to the website. It says there's an ES and an EN button, so you can click on the Spanish one for Espanol, ES, or the EN one for English, right? And so I basically added those links so you can get to that FMM online and download it, and you can fill it out before you get on the plane. How about that? You can find that at www.portoviartatravelshow.com. I'll put it in the show notes for episode number four. And why not? I'll put it in the episodes for show, note, show, uh, show notes for episode number two and also for episode number three. So you have no problem. You'll have no problem finding the link to be able to get that FMM online. And thank you, Brett, once again, for sending that tip to me. And by the way, Brett has a really good story about timeshares, and he's a little shy about it. And I'm going to try to coax him to come on the show, and he's going to tell you how he makes timeshares work for him. That is, if I can coax him to come on. Anyway, it's really interesting. And you, yes, you also can reach out to me and tell me your Puerto Vallarta story or give me a suggestion or a tip. 
just by going to the Contact Us tab at the top of the web page and send me an email, you guys. It's really easy to do, and it's a lot of fun. And I really, really enjoy hearing from my audience. It, it, it makes me feel like there's people out there that are listening and enjoying it. So I really want to hear from you, and it's a good feeling to know that there's somebody out there. So, Brett, thanks, man. Thanks for sending that in. And uh, if you're listening, I'm gonna I'm after you. I want you to come on board and talk a little bit about what you do. So this episode, I am going to be talking about buses in Puerto Vallarta with my friend Jr. in PV. Now you guys got to cut me a little slack here because I'm just getting used to the the long distance interviewing thing and you know the proper recording levels and all that other wonky tech stuff. And what I'm saying is that. I'm going to get better in the future, I promise. So just bear with me as I improve my technique as I go along. I've been told by the best in the business that don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. So I'm going to get this material out. And with that in mind, let's ask JR, is it okay to take buses in Puerto Vallarta? JR, what about buses um are they safe are you gonna are you gonna find chickens and livestock on them what what, what, do, what do you expect when you get onto a, a bus okay we don't have uh, chicken buses anymore i'm uh, going back we did but um uh, first of all you have to understand that the bus system here was not built for tourists it was built to get people to and from work for children to get to and from school etc., etc. So uh, the routes tend to go through the residential areas, um, the local residential areas, where uh, a tourist would be completely lost. Interesting, yeah, because I found that most bus drivers don't speak English very well. I imagine that's probably why they don't, they don't interact with tourists that much. No, uh, some do. But, I mean, yeah, if you can just say the destination in Spanish... Uh, they'll either say yes or no. Another thing to consider, of course, is that downtown, uh, we basically only have two north-south streets. So in other words, to get from the south side of town to the north side of town, you've got to go through one of those streets. Um, Basically, if you're going north, it's one street. If you're going south, it's another. Uh, Consequently, there's a lot of buses go through downtown that then go off into all these weird areas that uh, many areas that I've never seen. (laughs) You mention on your website um, a very funny thing. You say, um, take a mystery tour, hop on a bus and see where it takes you. And that sounds like a lot of fun. Um, Would would there be a place that you would take a bus to nowhere that you wouldn't want to go? No. Um, and it's a cheap trip. It's just seven and a half pesos. Um, well, there and back, it's 15 pesos. I mean, you go to the end of the line. Uh, sometimes the bus will turn around and come back. Uh, sometimes there's another bus waiting to go back, and you might have to change. Of course, you have to pay twice. Sure. So do you need exact change when you get on a bus? It helps. Um, you know, I mean, seven and a half pesos... The little half pesos, the, the, the 50 centavo coin, is now a tiny thing. Yeah, you <laughs> can really lose it. And, really small and difficult to find in your pocket sometimes. That's for sure. So what is this What is this little white piece of paper that the driver gives you when you get on a bus? The first time I got on a bus, I thought it was for a transfer or something. No, that, that, that shows that you've paid. And, and occasionally an inspector will come in and look at the numbers on the, on the uh, bus driver's uh, stack of tickets and go through the bus and check the numbers and that everybody's been issued one and that the driver is not cheating by not giving um, a ticket. Aha, that's what that's for. So they don't have those uh, fun little cameras that they have up here in the States that keep an eye on your drivers and keep them all good and, and honest. Actually, they're giving away... I mean, they're they're handing you a ticket, which is a receipt. Yes, it's a receipt. And also, I believe it probably covers you in the case of an accident. Although, I can't remember the last 
In fact, I can't even remember ever there being a, a bus accident where anybody got hurt inside the bus. That's good to know. Um, all right, so let's say that you arrive at the airport and all you have is carry-on baggage, for example, a, maybe a backpack or a rollaway. Let's say you're, you're traveling light. Uh, can you catch a bus from the airport to where you're going, either north or south of the airport? Uh, only south. Uh, well, no, north or south, really. Um, the ones going north will be not city buses. They'll be rather long-distance buses, most of them, because the, the border of the next state is just north of the airport. So anything going over there is a, a, basically an intercity bus. Um, mm -hmm. There are... Uh, the buses coming south um, basically are coming from Extapa, Las Palmas, um, not that many. <laughs> One of them <laughs> that I've taken before is a magical mystery <laughs> tour. Um, although it said central, it said central on the front, and, and it eventually got there, but it took a long, long time. We ended up in the hinterland. I don't know where we were. I just sat there and crossed my fingers, and eventually it got to the south side where they all end up. But uh, in the case of coming from the airport, avoid any bus going south that says Pitial, because that's the first place this uh, magical mystery tour bus goes. <laughs> and it kind of winds its way through Pitial, I imagine. It goes through Pityal, and it goes through a lot of other colonias that I've never seen before. Okay, so you're going to be looking for a bus that's going south that doesn't say Pityal on it. What, would you have one that might have a specific, would it just say El Centro on it? What would it say? Well, it'll say Centro. I don't think there's any uh, tunnel buses that uh, go um, by the airport. I might be wrong there. Now, I should explain that if it says Tunnel, which is spelled T-U-N-E-L and pronounced Tunnel. Um, this goes on the bypass road around uh, downtown, mm -hmm. avoiding that constriction there. So if you're going to the south side or you're uh, going from the south side north and you want to avoid uh, downtown and the delay of going through all that traffic, you take the bypass road, which is called the Libra Miento, uh, which basically means it's free. Ah, okay. So, and it will also say tunnel on it, right? Yeah, tunnel. Tunnel. T-U-N-E-L. Um, that, that will avoid downtown. So if, if you're going from the hotel zone, the marina, well, not the marina so much, but from the hotel zone or anywhere up, towards the airport uh, and you want to go to the south side of town, um, you can avoid downtown by taking the tunnel bus. Okay, got it. So if you are going to be taking a bus to downtown from the hotel zone, that's pretty much, that's just going right through downtown pretty much, isn't it? Right. Now, well, well, they all go through down. They all go to the south side, but from the hotel zone, some will take the bypass road. Okay. You can see it quite easily on my map, and and you can click on that, and it, it starts from uh, the Marina Airport area all the way down to Ms. Maloya. Oh, that's right, and that does actually show the right buses to take. Yeah, and and I also have maps for Nairi, um north of the airport. Um, for instance, Nueva Vallada, Bucerías, and La Cruz de Juanacasle. Fantastic. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why you all need to go to vallartainfo.com and click on that map tab, bring them down, and you can see how really nice and detailed these are. They give restaurants, they give locations of where to catch those buses. Uh, so Right. It, yeah, it shows the bus stops. Well, uh -huh. most of them. Yeah, that is so invaluable. These destinations are put on the windshields of the buses, right? Well, at the top of the bus, there's a window. That's their main destination window. That will tell you where they will end up. 
Then they write on the windscreen the various places that you might want to go to. Uh, for instance, Walmart. Um, it might say IMSS, which is the uh, local uh, state hospital. Um, it may mention markets like uh, Mega or Soriana. Um, uh, it may also mention places in between the main destination and their origin. Okay, so those are the tips when you're looking at the bus to understand where they're going at the end, which is along the top, and then the stops that they make along the way, which is written on the windscreen. Right. Uh, for instance, Marine Terminal, if you want to take um, an excursion that's leaving from the Marine Terminal, you would want to look for the bus that says Walmart and Marine Terminal. Uh, if you want to actually go to the marina, which is not the same as the Marine Terminal and is quite a distance away, uh, you need to take the marina bus. There's only one bus that drives into the residential area of the marina. That will say marina on top. This particular bus is not very regular, about every 20 minutes. Okay, so if you want to go to the marina, then you really you, you need to plan for not having a bus come pick you up right away. Right. It, it, it's more in, it's not as frequent as the other buses. The other buses are like every five minutes there's another bus. Yeah, yeah. It seems like, well, it seems like it's an, always a, a, a conga line of buses in, in Puerto Vallarta. Right. And then if you're going south, um, let's say uh, to Mismaloya or Boca de Tomatlan, uh, there's the bus that goes from the south side all the way to Boca de Tomatlan and then turns around and comes back. Um, that is eight pesos. So seven and a half for the city bus all the way up to the airport-ish. And then um, if you are going to be catching that Miss Maloya bus that goes down to Boca, that will cost you eight pesos. A huge, a whopping eight pesos. What's eight pesos today? About 40 cents? Uh, yeah, something like that. Not much. <laughs> uh, then, if you're going, if you're going further south, say to the botanical garden um, or to El Tuito, uh, there's another bus that leads from the corner of uh, Aguacati and Carranza, and that will cost you twenty-eight pesos all the way to El Tuito, and takes about uh, fifty minutes. That's a regular city bus too. No, this is not a city. Well, <laughs> it's really inter-city bus because uh, El Tuita would really be considered another city. Okay, and then that one you catch, and that'll take you even further south. Right. If you're going to say the botanical gardens, right? They say uh, actually to botanical gardens it's only twenty pesos, but quite often the driver just takes the twenty-eight, which is all the way to El Tuita. Okay, got it. Now, tell me, what, what's El Tuito like? El Tuito is quite a bit older than, than Puerto Vallarta, in fact. Um, it was a stop on the Camino Real, uh, the, the, the King's Road, uh, from Barra de Navidad to the mines. The Manila boat coming from the Philippines would stop occasionally in Barra de Navidad and unload some goodies for the mines, maybe mm -hmm. take on a little silver, but mainly unload goodies for the mines. And they would go by uh, ox cart and uh, mule um, all the way up this road. Um, of course, it was quite primitive in those days. And El Tuito was about halfway, and it's a valley, and it had grazing, and it had water. And so they would stop there, and eventually, they, they built some accommodation, and that was the start of the town. Now, um, actually, I, I just saw, not too long ago, a, po saw a post of you going down to El Tuito. Yeah, we went to El Tuito, which is on the way to uh, a couple of remote beaches uh, called um, Playa Maito and a fishing village called Tewamicle. Okay, yeah. Yeah, try okay everybody, try saying that five times fast. <laughs> Tell it meekly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um so 
That's fantastic. I, that I think pretty much covers most of what I wanted to talk about. Well, no, not really. Let's well, talk about no, going. No, there's buses going north. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. What about those buses going north? Right, How, right. Do you want to get to Nueva Bayada, Buzarias, um, uh, Cusabana, Casli, Punta de Mita, uh, uh, Sayulita, Lode Marcos, Recon de Guayapitos, uh, and all those uh, places in Nayarit, uh, most, uh, a lot of them are all covered by a bus line called ATM, um, not to be confused with the cash machine. <laughs> Another Compostela Pacifico line, um, the ATM only goes to Punta de Mita uh, and around the bay. Uh, for Sayulita and the other locations, you need the Pacifico, uh, the Compostela Pacifico line. Um, these are all available at Walmart. There's an actual uh, special bus stop for all these buses going north, not city buses. Okay, so you catch those at, oh, that's so funny, those are available at Walmart. That sounds just like a commercial, I like that. So, uh, <laughs> All right, so um, you catch a bus if you're going to be going up north and get the Compostela bus. You need to uh, get to Walmart first. Well, yes, it actually there's a couple. Of, well, there's one other stop um, before Walmart. Uh, the first stop is uh, right at the end of the Libramiento, at the bottom end of uh, the hotel zone. But that's more complicated. It's marked on my map, but, and, and it's a good one to get to if you want to get a seat, if it's very busy. So it can get really busy if people are going up north, especially in the mornings when people are going to work, right? Exactly, exactly. This applies to going south as well. If you, if you, if you wanted to go to Boca de Tomatlan and went down to catch the first bus uh, on the south side, uh, <laughs> You might want to go to the next bus in line to get a seat because uh, quite often to be standing room only. And those are fun trips when you're standing in those trips, especially that south one. How about the north one? Is it just as fun? Uh, yeah, um, it's good. It's good. Uh, it can get, as I said, very busy. I even had a lady offer me a seat once. No. I guess she thought I was really old. John. Come on, I, I know. I know you're very durable. I know that you can. I know you can get around. Yeah, but I, I was hanging on, you know, hanging on the rail, and uh, I guess she thought uh, I, I could use the seat, and she got up and gave me her seat. <laughs> All right. So, so these buses are interstate buses, right? They go from um, from Not, Jalisco to Nayarit, or right, but they're considered intercity. Thank you, intercity. Okay. So, what kind of uh, what kind of pesos do we need to bring along when we, let's say, we're going up to Punta de Mita and we hop on that bus over at? All right. Well, let's see. Uh, Busarias is fourteen pesos. Um, Nueva Bayada is either fifteen pesos or eighteen pesos, depending on whether you go to the north end of it or the south end of it. Okay. Um, La Cruz de Guanacasle is 18 pesos, Punta de Mita is 26, Sayulita is 35, I believe, um, and that takes you right into Sayulita, um, and that's the best bus to get for Sayulita. So Sayulita is as far, no, they go farther north, right? Uh, yeah, um, okay. If you want to go further north than Sayulita, say San Pancho, which is actually called San Francisco, but everybody calls it San Pancho, Lo de Marcos, um, Ricon de Guayabitas, La Penita, um, are all on the way uh, on that road that eventually goes to Topeak, the capital of, uh, of Nayarit. Uh, those buses will not go into these various speech towns. They will drop you on the highway and you'll have to uh, hoof it in to the actual town. But it's usually less than a mile. Okay, good. And um, so all of those buses, again, you catch there at the... Um, well, Walmart. Yeah. Well, Walmart's the 
the, the most recognizable um, location. You know, everybody knows what it looks like. Um, you can actually get it earlier, um, as I said, at the beginning of the hotel zone, um, and it's marked on my map, and that's good if you if you want to be sure to get a seat. It also stops at the airport if you wave it down. Um, when I say waving a bus down, buses will stop for you. Uh, uh, many places, the buses will stop for you where there's not an actual regular stop. Mm, really? Um, mm. On on the southern road, on the northern road, as long as there's a place they can pull off because there are only two lanes, um, then they will stop. But in order to wave them down, do not wave at them. They're more likely to wave back. All right, so what's, okay. what, what's the, the high the sign? Problem, <laughs> right, the proper way to stop a bus is to point to the middle of the road right in front of you. Ah, okay. So All that's, right. that's you, it right there. Just point at the middle of the road right in front of you. And the bus will stop. Fantastic. They take directions. I like that. So instead of waving and saying, hey there, what you're saying is stop right here, right where I'm pointing. Well, I mean, this is the tradition down here. Um, you know, they never waved. They always did that. And the bus drivers know that means somebody you know, uh, wants you to stop. If you wave, they may think you're waving at somebody else. Right. Yeah, because they don't know you. So if you are a visitor coming to Puerto Vallarta, would you suggest ever renting a car? No, I wouldn't at all. I mean, unless you're planning on, on driving, uh, you know, to somewhere where there's not a regular bus uh, service, like, say, San, um, San Sebastian, for example, um, you can't really have a day drive to San Sebastian on a bus because by the time you get there, um, it's almost time to go back because they only have about four buses a day. Oh, San Sebastian, that is the uh, silver mining town up, 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 up in the hills, way up there? Well, up in the mountains, actually, yeah. 4,600 feet is pretty high. Yeah, that's not a hill. Well, all right. Listen, uh, is there anything else that you can think of that we need to know about the public bus system down here? Uh, just be ready to hold on, because quite often the driver will take off while he's making change. Okay, so keep an eye on that. Make sure that you uh, always turn around. Don't leave anything on the bus. Very important before you leave, because you will not get it back. Well, maybe you will, uh, but may maybe no, you will, right? People have gotten stuff back that they've left behind sometimes. But, you know, it, it, there's nothing, there's no, like, central garage or anything. A lot of these buses are owned by the drivers, and they drive them home. Oh, I didn't know that. That's very interesting. All right. So they're owned by the drivers. That means that, you know, they're, are they in cahoots with the city? What happens there? How do they, how do they well, work no, that out? No, uh, nothing to do with the city. There are various bus um, companies, but they're like cooperatives in a way. In other words... Uh, some of the bus companies uh, own a bunch of buses and, in effect, rent them out to the driver, right? Yes. Um, other drivers actually own their bus and work with the cooperative and, and only pay the cooperative a certain amount. Okay. All right. Well, that is pretty – that's a um, pretty precise – Description of what's going on down on the ground in Puerto Vallarta regarding buses and the bus system there. And just remember, everybody, if you have the urge to rent a car, don't, unless you are going somewhere where the buses and the cabs aren't going to take you. And speaking of cabs, in another episode, you and I are going to be talking about taxis, too. Is that okay, JR? Sure, that's fine. Uh, I, I would interject also that if you're going to rent a car... The only rental company I can really always 100% recommend are Gecko Car Rental. Uh, they're not in town. They're in Bucerias, but they will come and get you or bring you a car anywhere, um, a including the airport. But they're the only ones uh, that don't uh, – the other rental car rental companies have gotten some pretty bad press. Um, finding finding damage that they said was caused, and of course it wasn't, but 
you know, um, they see a point of getting extra money. And they're not always that way, but it, it seems to attract, you know, the sort of person who's on the fiddle. <laughs> I've never heard that. I've never heard that on the fiddle. I like it. Yeah, English expression. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very good. Well, all right. Well, then, uh, thanks. That's a great tip then, Gecko, for those of you who are thinking about wrenching a car. If you really, really, really got to do it, uh, do it through this uh, company in Bucerias called Gecko. JR, once again, you are a huge fount of information for us, for my listeners, for our listeners, and I really, really appreciate you coming on again today. Oh, you're welcome, Barry. All right, we'll talk again soon, and maybe this next time about taxis. Okay, I'll try and uh, think out some good things to say. I'm um, sure you will. Thanks again, <laughs> JR. Okay, bye-bye. Bye now. So, that was quite an in-depth look at taking buses in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, wouldn't you say? Now, there's a couple of items I want to touch base with before we leave this subject behind, and that's the conversation that I had with JR about taking a bus from the airport. Now look, I would never suggest that you take a bus from the airport if you're a first-time traveler to Puerto Vallarta. That's a bus from the airport, of course, to your hotel, okay? It would be silly. It wouldn't be right. I'm just talking about a seasoned traveler who's been to Puerto Vallarta many times, maybe more than once, and it's traveling light, with no luggage, maybe just a backpack and a roll-on, maybe something really light, okay? Now, if you do that, you can catch that bus along the side of the arrivals terminal, right underneath the pedestrian bridge. You look for a bus that says Centro on it, okay? Now, the other item that I want to mention is that the Mismaloya bus that also goes to Boco de Tamatlan, that can be found at the corner of Basio Badillo, and Constitution. And those are the orange and white buses. You're going to actually find them right there on Constitution, right there, tucked in. And they're going to cost you eight pesos. And I also want to remind you that that bus to El Tuito and to the Botanical Gardens, you can catch at Aguacate and Carranza. Okay? So check out my show notes for all the routes and all the costs for the buses in Puerto Vallarta. And you're going to find those at www.portoviartatravelshow.com. And those notes are going to be right there with the podcast show notes as well. Now, I should also mention that since we're talking pesos and dollars here, that as of this podcast, January 22nd, 2017, the Mexican peso to the U.S. dollar is almost 22 pesos to one dollar. Now, I also have to add that we have experienced an increase of up to 20% in fuel prices in the last weeks here, last couple of weeks here in Mexico. So taxi and bus prices are expected to rise in the near future, but never fear, we're going to keep you up to date as things on the ground change. But thus, thus far, we haven't seen any drastic changes in transportation costs to the end user, uh, but... Again, we're going to keep an eye on that, and as things change here on the ground, we will let everybody know. Okay, again, you're going to be able to find all the show notes to this podcast and to others, including links to JR's website, right at www.puertoviartatravelshow.com, where you'll also find the fanta- links to the fantastic music of Alberto Perez, who we're going to listen to as we play out this episode of the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show. And remember that this is an interactive show where I depend on your participation and by you sending me emails with questions for JR that you'd like to hear him answer on the air with me. And please email me either your suggestions for show topics that you think I should be talking about or just email me your story by clicking on that Contact Us tab on my website at the top of the homepage at the Puerto Vallarta Travel Show.com. And remember, if you're considering booking any type of 
well, any type of tour while you are here in uh, Puerto Vallarta, why go to JR's website at vallartainfo.com and reserve your tour through him right from his website. Remember that this is a value for value proposition, my friends. His experience and on the ground knowledge of everything Puerto Vallarta in exchange for your making a purchase of a tour that you would do anyway, right? You're just doing it through him as a way of saying thank you. Thank you, JR, for being our guide. It costs you no more than if you were to use someone else, so just do it, really. And when you do take one of those tours, email me about your experiences, would you? Maybe you can come on board and share with others what you liked or, hey, what you didn't like about the tour. Again, email me with your experiences at, well, the top of my website, of course, at the Contact Us page there. Bring it down and send me an email. And one more favor, please. If you like this podcast, well, take the time and give me a good review on iTunes, if you would. It would be just so appreciated if you just take that little extra time and do that for me. And that way we can get the word out to more and more people about the magic of this place, Puerto Vallarta. So thanks to you for listening all the way through. Thank you, JR, for sharing all you know about buses and for answering all my goofy questions, too. And thanks all again, all of my friends there. This is Barry Kessler signing off with a wish for all of you to slow down, be kind, and live the Vallarta lifestyle. Nos vemos, amigos.